What's up guys, it's your boy Jay and welcome to another episode of the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I think this is the last possible way that we can go before we get into the new content, which is amazing. I've been meaning to get into it, so let's just finish this whole thing off. Look Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. I know. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, hmm? stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. Bang. Yes, I know. That's an old joke. I don't care at this point. Bang. Bang. Oh, Stanley, is that oh. you? Oh, yes. Hold on, Hello. Sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. Oh, right. Okay, do I not have keys? Do I not right, now, do I not have I keys? Want you to come in and tell me all about your damn boy. <laughs> gotcha. Thanks, mate. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Yeah. They want to commit their life to you. I'm trying Thanks. to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Right, what is going on here? Empty space room. Mannequin. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. I'm sorry, what? Good morning, good boy. 427, press square on your controller. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Thanks. Please press that button look at him there pushing buttons doing uh -huh. exactly what he's told to do now he's pushing a button now he's eating lunch now he's going home now he's coming back to work one might even feel sorry for him except that he's chosen this life okay but in his mind ah in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures from behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Cool. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Oh, that's kind of mean. Uh, where's the TV in here? And so he began to fantasize about his own oh. job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, Everyone in the building Wait. had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Wait, this is the same... Wait, no, this is the same as the, um... thingy. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. Okay. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Hmm. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley, the Stanley Parable. Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then okay. again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Hmm. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? Oh, it's In my reality, desk. all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Hmm. Um, uh, okay. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. 
that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to press it. Oh, screw it, I'm going to press it. You see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley um, pushed a button. How do I die? And I tried. Well. That was a weird ending, but... There is another ending we can do over there, and that will be the final ending that we have to do for this main mode. I don't care about any others or any secret others. I do not care. I've done as many as I can. This is the last one. So let's do it. Look at this phone her, real quick. Stanley. Look at the phone. You need to be the one to do this. It's a nice phone. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. You know what? No! There's a plug here! I'm gonna unplug it! As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Um, hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? Yeah. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? I don't know. You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. Go on, check your stuff, mate. Check no. your stuff. It's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Yeah, comes sure. In, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None I don't of these know. decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you. Wait a second. Did I just see. No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. Sorry? <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or you <laughs> do not grasp the severity of the situation. Well, I mean? won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Thank Please you. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's Choice. the best part of being a real person. Agreed. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. Agreed. For example. In this scenario, Hello. a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Good man. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. Hey? If you find yourself Fish. speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow hmm. the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. On jaw? Practice. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis oh, wait, was is the best to do something? part to a uh, healthy okay, decision-making uh, process. Sure. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do really? you make more than eight? Less? Probably less. And finally... If you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. 
At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. I but see. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. And for anyone who asks uh, how many choices I make, well, I play Fantasy Premier League. Um, I think that's more than enough choices for any human being to take. What, can I not fall off? Now that we know your choices are meaningful, I can't, can't fall off. You jumping off the platform and dying. Good Imagine point. the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. We that already story did that ending. Make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, Agreed. it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. All right, let's get back here all right through here through. okay everything seems normal so do i go through here again okay almost there you'll take the door on the left back to the correct ending the story will have resolution once again and you'll be home free in the real world okay makes sense right Test me. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. Kay. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm go quite ahead. sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All Kay. right. Let's <clears> go. <throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. The right one had to open, didn't it? All right, where we go right? No! Why did you do that? I don't Quickly. know. Hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. All right, I'm here. Wait. Um, okay, I guess that's just how it's going to end. Uh, what's going on oh, here? It's ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you know. think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I don't know. I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To Maybe. willingly destroy all of my work? Perhaps. No. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. Sorry. I have to. Are we good? Is the game dead? What the hell? What in the Portal 2 is this? I'm Hello. still here, here in this pile of rubbish, with you, you, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? No. He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Thanks. Oh, my story. Sorry. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It really? would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... Oh. ...behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm back I'm here. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. Um, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. What when do I want to do? Stanley came to a set of, set of two, two open, open doors, doors, he, he opened the door on his left. left. 
Right, let's go left this time. Let's see what happens. Okay. Everything is fine. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I guess I'm actually going to have to do the ending again. Okay. Oh, it's a different... Office? Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. I don't until know. he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Hello. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Atomic. Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Hopefully he does it himself. Shark Tank 115. Um, Shark Knight 115. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. Night Shark 115. No, surely I don't speak. I'm sorry, is there a problem? Yes. You didn't mishear me, did you? No. Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. I'm trying. Night Shark 115. Night, Night Shark 115. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it, but you know what? What? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You I was trying to choice, get in. You, know. you could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. I don't know. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You. When Stanley came to a set of oh. two open doors, Hello. he entered the door on his left. Go on. Uh, through the door on your left? Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I I need you to make a choice. Oh, the end. Walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. Hmm. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. Oh. I need this. This is quite sad. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Uh-huh. Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. That's a really sad ending. Okay, we have one more ending. Apparently, I saw some things All on the his computers. All were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I saw something about an input code like... No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Last mission. Last mission, there was something about an input code. This! This! What is this? Okay. Um... What now? Do I restart? Okay, so apparently the next one is... Nice. Okay, the next one's here. Right, what's this?
Welcome, Stanley, to heaven. Oh, I get it. His version of heaven is buttons. Nice. Nice. But, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, wait, can I click this? Can I reach the ones at the top? Yeah, um, like, comment, and subscribe, I guess. I got nothing to hide.